Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Project Ozone 3, Kappa Mode. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Well, good for you. I have a really bad headache, so my day is not the best. But let's get on with today's episode and we're going to start by redesigning the capacitor factory. Hopefully this is going to be the last time we're going to redesign this because first of all, I'm gonna tear it down. Completely. Can we vein mine these as well? Oh yeah. Nice. Do you know what stands before you? It is called a blank canvas. And therefore, we're going to start fresh and we're going to redesign the building. Of course, just to clarify, I did not have to break down the empowerers. I just wanted to redesign the building completely. So I was like, yeah, let's tear it down and reorganize. I know what you're thinking, Lush, what the hell are you doing? You will see. Let us order some capacitors and then you will see the light. Let's order 10. We have everything. Now do you see it? It's perfect. If it was not clear enough, the lights are for aesthetic purposes. Also, they serve as indicators that at which stage of crafting we are. The cyan lamp is for silver capacitor. The light blue lamp is for energized capacitor. And the lime lamp is for the crystalline capacitor. And this is why we have 8 cyan, 4 light blue and 2 lime. The only thing I did is that I reorganized everything and tried to make everything look nicer. This does not solve our problem. Our problem is this has to be constantly working. Auto crafting capacitors is not a very good option because it's going to require a lot of processing power. And you should also take into consideration that I already have 1600 silver capacitors. So it's not going to craft any of those. Otherwise, this was ridiculous. So instead, we're going to try something else. This is the recipe that we need in order to make the crystalline capacitor. This is all the ingredients that has to be imported inside our ender chest so that it would be processed by our capacitor factory. And the idea is the ME system will constantly make all of this material and export it inside this ender chest. And this way, that guy is always active. Let's see if it works. And just to stop everything from overflowing, I do have a resonant filter which specifies only keep one stack. It should work. Yeah, it started working. You see, now we know what we're missing. The lime lamp is off and therefore we are out of crystalline alloy ingots. Also, the way that I understood this, our capacitor factory is going to be constantly operational. The only bottleneck is our production. The problem is, I do not have enough alloy smelters because these are constantly working but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think the best solution is that we wait for a while and then we will see which item is our bottleneck and then we will increase the production of that item. I let this guy run for a while to see if I made any mistakes and so far I did not find any which is very confusing. We have a decent number of capacitors. We have like 230 or something. I have this. I can look it here. <laughs> But yeah, we have 251 capacitors, which is very good. So I guess I will not change this and wait for your comments to see if I did anything wrong because I cannot find it. But I found our bottleneck, which is the crystalline alloy ingot. It has a crazy recipe. It's going to require grains of pisality, which comes from pulsating crystal. And this is the recipe. And our main bottleneck is pulsating iron. We can craft it, but it's incredibly slow and we need four of these in order to make one of these. So should I make the seed? Okay, we're going to need iron seed. We're going to need tier four, which is not a problem, but we're also going to need enderman seed. And it's not the best. Okay, we need enderman chunks. Fine, it is what it is. So we're going to go and try to make pulsating iron seeds. We're going to need soul dust so that we can make solium dust, so that we can make the solium dagger. And we're going to enchant it with mending, looting, and sharpness. And we are going to go and try to find endermen. We're not gonna go too crazy, we just need like two pieces and that's it. Come on, drop it. No. Yeah, we have two. We're good. Now for the first time in my life, I'm actually really happy that I kept an extra seed. One of these days, I'm going to make a stupid spawner for that big brother 
and we don't have to move this thing all the time. So if we have everything, we should be able to make the Enderman seed. And where is my wand? Yes, we have it. Cool. Just out of curiosity, do I need this for anything else? Let's make an extra one. Yeah, because I think we can afford it. We just need one extra seed. So we're fine. And we should be able to make the pulsating iron. Yes. We're good. The pulsating iron seed is now 10, 10, 10. And we are going to plant it at our mystical agriculture area. And we're going to just plant you here. Like so. Grow. And this is the recipe. Good. So we should be getting it in our ME system. It's not an incredibly fast rate, but... It's not bad. In addition to that, we have an extra enhanced alloy smelter, and I'm going to program this for the crystalline alloy. So we put you here, and we will say, keep 1000. No? Does it take time? It does not require time. It requires you to export it. So I forgot these. Now we're cool. It's working really fast. Really fast. If you're face palming right now, I probably deserve this because I actually thought if you have an interface, it means that it's going to auto craft everything, but it's not. So we need to change this. Instead, we're going to have export buses into chests and we're going to export the items inside, like so. And it should work. And then we're going to have an interface for items that we always have in bulk. These are always on auto crafting and this guy is just Prismarine, so we always have it. And then we're going to export it inside the ender chest. And I think this time it's functioning. I hope so. In our quest to solve our never ending problems, I have encountered a new problem. And now it's the processing power. We have four CPUs, three of them are garbage, and the only good one is working on garbage. So we're going to need more CPUs and more core processing units. The problem is, when I set the layout of the base, I forgot that we need CPUs and I don't know where to put them. I was thinking maybe here we will have 10. It's been quite a while later and everything seems to be functioning. That thing has not stopped at all. So I'm very happy about that. We have almost 850 capacitors. I also added some of these. I'm waiting for the last one to be crafted so that we will have six CPUs. Uh, we will improve them, but for now, that's all I can afford. And they're ready. Okay, cool. This is a premium insatiable wonder capacitor and this is the maximum speed that it's making end steel. If we make stellar capacitor, will it go faster? I just set the pattern and let's craft one. Oh yeah, it's done. Okay, let us try this. Oh, it's actually far faster. Holy. But the problem is this guy requires shulkers and I don't have that many shells. But we have a crazy sword and there is something called end cities. And there are shulkers. How many did we get? One? You're looting 20. Again, one. So maybe eventually we have to start farming shulkers because uh, this is not working. On the Enderman it works. In a few seconds, it will be day 400. And we need to start working on something that we need in order to make the Philosopher's Stone. This guy. Some of you guys will be very happy. I'm not. Alright guys, last time we talked it was day 400. Now it's day 428. What have I been doing in these 28 days? Well, I did add a few more machines, I made more ME controllers, I had to put quantum entangler porters on auto crafting, which I realized it's a very crazy recipe because there are easier methods of doing that, but you know, generally I like them. I also had to uh, fix a few issues that we had with our base, but I got into nuclear craft. This is my third attempt in trying to automate the production of the fuel that we're going to need in order to make the Philosopher's Stone. It is called HECF 251 Oxide Fuel. And yeah, it was complicated. In order to get HECF 251, we're going to need four different fuels and we need to put them inside a fusion reactor so that they will be depleted, so that we can process them further, so that we will get tiny clumps of different materials, so that we can also make the higher tier of fuel. So let's go through them one by one. The first fuel that we needed to process is called TBU fuel and it's made from thorium 232, which is an isotope of thorium. So you just need an isotope separator and you will get it. Easy peasy. The thing is, then you have to put this inside the fission reactor in order to get the depleted version and then you have to put the depleted version in a fuel reprocessor so that you will get uranium 233. Then we have a second isotope separator which gets uranium and gives us uranium 238 
Once we have uranium-238 and 233, we would be able to make LEU-233. So far, we have covered two of the fuels and therefore we have two reactors here. One of them is processing TBU fuel and the other one is processing LEU-233. The third fuel that we're going to need is called HEP-241, which you get it from plutonium-241 and 242. And we get plutonium-241 and 242 from the LEU fuel and we process it in this reactor, which is offline right now. Once we have the depleted HEP-241, we put it inside a fuel reprocessor in order to get corium-246 and 247, and we use that in order to make LECM-247. Easy, right? And we're processing it here, which is also empty. And of course, once we get the depleted LECM-247 fuel, we will put it inside another fuel reprocessor, and we will get Californium-252 and 251. And that's the thing we need in order to make HECF-251. Basically what I explained to you guys is the exact same thing I explained to our ME system. And it can have HECF-251 fuel on auto crafting. Easy peasy. It just requires a lot of time and a lot of items. You see? It's crafting. You might notice that HECF-251 is not the fuel that we need in order to make the Philosopher's Stone. This is the Oxide version. And I kept this one so that we can do it together. We're going to oxidize this. And oxidizing this is literally the easiest thing that you can do. I do have an electrolyzer which is making oxygen and then I have a fluid infuser which if we put it inside we will get HECF-251 oxide fuel. I'm happy. Of course I would like to mention that this is not a very efficient way of doing this because theoretically in order to make the next tier of fuel you're going to need a reactor which burns the previous tier of fuel at like 4 times the speed. So theoretically this guy had to be 32 times bigger than this guy. But I like symmetry so I'm doing it like this and I'm not caring for the fuel and I'm not even using the fuel. So far I also found one more fuel that we need to process in order to get the awakened draconium seeds in extended crafting and that is called HEB. 248 and luckily we're getting the Berkelium, so we're fine. Our capacitor factory has been running the whole time and we have 4757 crystalline capacitors so we can just easily make like 500 of these. We can. Nice, that's very nice. You might also notice that the capacitor factory is offline right now and I was checking what's wrong and I noticed we're out of lead. So we need to start making lead seeds and it's not that bad. That's also not that bad. That is also not that bad. We just need mycelium. If I'm not wrong, infestation spores from Botania should give you mycelium. We did this in FTB Revelation, but for the life of me, I cannot remember. So let's try this again. Will you give me mycelium? Haha. <laughs> One of the things that I also automated was the phytogenic insulator and this makes our life so much easier because I can grow any plants. I used to think that mycelium grows over grass, but it's not. Those are the ones I planted, so I don't know. Yeah, I think that's enough for the start. Cool. I'm still trying to get mushrooms. It's so nice. These animals are driving me mad. They're everywhere. I'm going to use a gun, we're going to give it bullets, and you're going to farm every single animal, and I'll be happy. And you're going to need a lever. Thank you. And by the way, mushrooms grow in darkness. And why are you red mushrooms? So there is a 50% chance that you will either get red or brown. We just have to get lucky, I guess. Red mushroom, brown mushroom, yes. Thank you. I'm thinking now that it's night time, let's use the night and get a 10 10 10 mushroom. It's so ridiculous that you have to do this in total darkness because uh, what if a John Cena spawns? I don't know. After a bunch of crafting, we have you, but we're still far, far away. And this guy has to be 10 10 10. And it's gonna require lead. Oh my goodness. Yes, we have enough. And we have our 10 10 10 lead seed, which is great. Also, someone was suggesting in the comments of the previous episode that Lush says he's not a fan of tick accelerating machines, but he's using lily pads of fertility to accelerate the growth of plants. Yes, of course, I have gone through like 2 million pieces of redstone until now. How are you supposed to grow them without lily pads of fertility? What I said in the previous episode was that if you use tick acceleration for machines, it will take away your creativity in order to do nice automations. And it takes the fun away. Not that it's illegal. Besides, our days of requiring tick acceleration is over. 
because we can make capacitors in bulk. Oh, I missed one. Anyhow, what are we trying to achieve now? Well, our main goal is to get the Philosopher's Stone so that we would be able to get the Wand of Animation and get into EMC. But our immediate goals at the moment are to get a builder from RF tool so that I can start making a Botania Island and start getting into Botania and Blood Magic and Astral Sorcery properly and also to get an imaginary time block which requires us to go to space. So this episode if we manage to make a crystallizer from Abyssal Craft, next episode we should be able to go to space and start getting the imaginary time block. Of course we need to get into Botania because Supremium Ingot requires Elementium which requires Terra Steel for some reason. <laughs> anyway, once we go to space and start with Botania, we should be able to get the Philosopher's Stone very soon. But let's not look that far into the future and try to get something that we can do this episode. This episode, we're going to try and advance in Abyssal Craft so that I would be able to make a Crystallizer so that I can get an RF Tools Builder. I want that island. I really want it. And in order to advance into Abyssal Craft, we are going to need the Staff of Rending which requires a dark staff from Lordcraft. Such an awesome mod. So an exotic amplification rod does not accept oak. Huh, do you accept spruce? I have no idea how that thing works, but we should be able to make it in our extended crafting table. We need you, and that's it. And we're also going to need a staff crafter, apparently, and we just assemble the dark staff, the staff of rending. In order to advance in Abyssal Craft, we're going to need to upgrade our Necronomicon to Abyssal Wasteland Necronomicon. And that requires the skin of the Abyssal Wasteland. And that requires the Abyssal Wasteland Essence. And how do you get that? You get that by the staff of rending. All you have to do is to find these stupid zombies and right click on them. And then you will get Essence. We have 31. Now we have 32. So I need to do this like 300 times to get 3 of them. We are at 94, so we should get it really soon. Yep, we have 1. We need 2 more. This thing has a huge range. Look how far that zombie is. <laughs> and we're still hitting him. Oh look, zombie fight. Uh, whenever the zombies from Abyssal Craft meet a normal zombie, they just try to convert him into one of their own. I hate those. We have what we need, but I was thinking I get one more because we might need it for something that I don't know. <laughs> so uh, let's get one more. I was editing the footage and I realized I might have sounded a bit confusing a few minutes ago. We don't need a builder from RF Tools in order to go to space or get into Botania. I just need it in order to make a sky island so that I have a Botania base. It's for aesthetic purposes. And we can just upgrade you? Good. And we just put you here to be charged. We don't have mobs. Talking about mobs, there is one mob that I should start working on and that is the wither skeleton because we want the skulls in order to have a wither farm so that we would be able to farm supremium essence. I don't know if that's a very good solution or not but it's the easiest solution anyways and there is one of them here. Oh and by the way, we had 32 interfaces here which I used for auto crafting and unfortunately I have used almost all the slots. So I made 32 more and we need to hook them up. And of course, we're gonna first shut you down so that I don't get teleported in my own mob farm. And then we're going to set you up. Do I have cables? Yes, we are getting them. Good. And you don't have to laugh. I was looking for a button. In order to go to the next dimension in Abyssal Craft, which is called Dreadlands, we need to upgrade our keystone. And for that, we're going to need the Eye of the Abyss and the Dreadland Infused Power Stone. We need to work on this guy first and for that we need to find a fortress and in order to find the fortress we need power stone trackers but we also need a pick because I don't think you can harvest it using cobalt. Maybe we can do it with this. I'm not sure. Let's go and find it. It was a quest so I'm guessing this is what we needed. So finding this stronghold is like finding a stronghold in vanilla minecraft. You just have to throw the eye and follow it. We should be incredibly close. I think it's under there. Let's go down and dig. Yes, it's here. Great. I did not want to vein mine the entire thing. Damn. You would really expect that in this fortress you would be able to find decent loot. And that's it. Oh yeah, it's here. We get rid of you and you with a carrot. And here is the power stone. And we should be able to harvest it. Yes. Come on. We have it. Great. Alright guys, I have a small confession to make. Uh, I fought the boss 
and I got the eye of the abyss. And then I realized I did not press record. I am very sorry. In any case, if you want to do the ritual yourself and you don't know how to do it, you just have to go to your Necronomicon. This is the recipe and it has to be done in the Abyssal Wastelands using Abyssal Wasteland cobblestone so that you will get these pedestals. And that's it. Okay, this time I double checked if I'm pressing record and I hope it's working. So the keystone goes in the center and can we use you? I think we should. And do we have enough PE? Yeah, yes. Good. Any second. Yes, we have it. Since we actually have to come to Abyssal Wastelands in order to use this portal, I'm going to put it right next to the old one. And we can just go. Our job in this dimension is extremely easy. We need to upgrade our staff of rending so that we would be able to gather essence here, so that we would be able to upgrade our Necronomicon, so that we can make a gateway key. It's obvious that we're not welcome here, so let's do this really fast and upgrade our staff of rending before someone does actual damage to me. Uh, we need you. Yes. You go in the center and upgrade. Control. Control. Five. Yes. We have it. I need to gather the essence of the dreadlands in order to make the skin of the dreadlands for the next maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I will do that, then I'll be right back. He is ideal for gathering the essence. The problem is he sets you on fire. Cause he has a ton of health. We got four of these essences just from that guy and he's still alive. <laughs> these big guys also drop the armor from Abyssal Craft and from here, if we repair them, we should be able to cheat and like make better armor. Better than the steel armor that we have. In any case, we can upgrade our Necronomicon. In order to make the new keystone, we need to make an altar. And each of them requires 20,000 PE. So I'm not sure if we upgrade this, will it work faster? Because otherwise it's going to take a lot of time. Okay, we are going to need Darkstone. And the only way to get Darkstone is that we transmute Cobblestone using you. Can I make you? No. Actually, to be honest with you, it's not a really bad recipe because we have almost everything. We just need slates and that's it. Because when I was looking for antimatter, I found a lot of this liquefied corallium ore, which we're going to double it. And I also harvested some corallium stone and we only need like three pieces. That's it. And we have the transmutator. Perfect. It was a quest. Nice. So the fuel is blaze rod and then you should be able to transmute. We have dark stone. Good. You know guys, the transmutator was not a question of if, it was a must, because otherwise you will not get radium ingots. But in any case, I did make the top half of the altar, and now we're going to start making the bottom half. So I did bring a fresh sacrifice, which is a cow, and we are going to activate it using our Necronomicon. Don't go anywhere. Dude, come back. Yes, stay here. Everything will be fine. And we get rid of you. Yes, we have it. According to the Necronomicon, we have to find the Dreadland Mountain Biome and then we need to set it up in Y level 40. We are in the mountains. We can go there. Actually, this is Y level 40. So what we have to do is to put you here and put you on top and then right click. Yeah, we're in the fortress. And the main reason that we are here is for him. No. Actually, there is a crystallizer in one of the rooms and it's for free. So we're gonna take it. Yes, that is a crystallizer and I do not have the appropriate pick. Actually, I do have the appropriate pick. You just have to equip your pick. We have it. We have the full set of armor. Look, <laughs> nice. So let's go get rid of the boss. So he is going to have millions of health, literally. I think he has like 1000 health. Uh, where is my bow? Here. He's almost dead. Yes! He's gone. If I'm not wrong, he should also drop a keystone somewhere. I just accidentally put it in my ME system. So we are fine. And here we have a legendary loot. Awesome. We had to do all of that because they were quests. But I mainly did that in order to get the crystallizer. If we put blaze rods inside and if we put a block of tin, we should get the tin crystal. Oh, we get four. Nice. And we can just make one builder. Nope. You have the tin crystal. I just gave it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take number two. We can just make a builder. There are RAKs on the ground. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have our builder. 
I'm so happy. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Next episode we will focus a little bit on our Botania area and we will also try to go to space. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.